the biggest villain in your life right now owns this place. I'm the second owner of the Columbus crew and I hope to be part of the Columbus community for a long time. They are considering moving the crew to Austin. It's been an honor to bring the vision of Major League Soccer to this great city of Austin, Texas. Why do I down for these people? It's wrong what they're doing. If the town is as big as, you know, they put it out to be, they wouldn't be leaving. Life doesn't provide you many assurances. Their day of reckoning is upon them. The fate of the Columbus Crew Soccer Club was about to be put to a city council vote. But the city in question was in a different state. It was officials in Austin that would be making the decisions, and local soccer supporters were on a final day of campaigning for this once-in-a-generation opportunity to bring Major League Soccer to their hometown. With just 18 hours before the city council would vote, the nerves among MLS to ATX supporters were coming to the surface. It's the Austin City Council, so you never know. But uh, definitely optimistic, uh, anxious, all of the above. I have a feeling I'll have a cocktail either way. So <laughs> uh, one will be celebratory and one would be despair. But I, I, I'm hoping for celebratory. We've had so many like false starts of thinking we were going to get to the vote and get to the decision and then to get the can kicked down the road. At this point, we're just kind of like, what version of city council will we see on tomorrow? I'm really looking forward to, to what tomorrow brings. I really hope that we finally have an answer. I'm looking forward to closure. As the night drew in, even those in the corridors of power stopped to consider what was at stake for both cities. Well, the fact that, that I have to be responsive to the people that elected me does, does not mean that I don't see and understand and, and feel uh, what's happening in, in, in Columbus. I've certainly heard from Columbus, um, from individuals who live in Columbus, both on Twitter and on social media, as well as in my inbox. And, you know, at the end of the day, I swore an oath to, to represent the best interests of the citizens of Austin, and, and that's what I do. I know what that feels like. Um, I remember growing up as a child in Washington, D.C., listening to the Washington Senators play games when I was supposed to be sleeping with my transistor radio on under my pillow uh, so that I could listen to the, to the end of games, uh, only to have my Washington Senators move and become the Texas Rangers. Uh, so I, 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 I know what this, what this feels like. We're not making the decision for that team to leave, but if that team is leaving and they're considering Austin, it's my job as an elected leader. It's consistent with the oath I took um, to make sure that, that we're exploring it if, if we believe it's a good thing for Austin. Throughout this whole process, uh, have you given any thought to the soccer fans back in Columbus? Well, have I given any thought to them? Hmm. You know, I can empathize with the folks in Columbus, and I can understand how this seems frustrating. But I don't represent Columbus. I represent Austin. And I'm going to make my decisions based on what's best for my city. Along Congress Avenue, it seemed like just another morning. But not even Willie Nelson had seen big league soccer in Austin, and today there was an unfamiliar sight outside City Hall. This sporting tale of two cities was set to reach a conclusion, and pre-court supporters weren't going to miss it. Ready to go. Hopefully today's gonna be a good day. Council members would debate and vote on whether or not to allocate pre-court land to build a stadium in Austin. If at least six of the 11 council members say yes, then pre-court would have his move. But would any of them be influenced by the testimonies from Columbus? With supporters and opponents gathered, 
it was finally time for the kingpin himself to make his entrance. Okay, great to meet you. Thank you. Anthony Precourt would be present for this session, but his negotiating would be handled by lobbyist Richard Suttle, a man known throughout Austin politics as the go-to guy to make big projects happen. Arguably the biggest road game in Columbus Crew history was about to play out on the floor of the Austin City Council. And with the media and the major players assembled, it was time for kickoff. I'm going to call to order the uh, special call to consider the uh, Major League Soccer uh, proposal. Much of the morning's negotiations concern matters of little interest to soccer fans. But the back and forth about public transport, policing, and infrastructure showed that the city was willing to push Precourt much harder than expected. If Precourt came to us with something, they would have to make it enticing enough for the city to, to do. Yes, Precourt would agree to that. Okay. And all the while, there was one notable objector on the dais. But Leslie Poole was not alone in her objections. And as negotiations continued, handwritten alterations to the deal were being made. If Precourt had thought he could waltz into the largest city without a professional sports team and be welcomed as a conquering hero, it was not what he was getting. Having watched early proceedings from his seat, Precourt started pressing Richard Suttle for answers. At the rest. If there were a rail station, then I believe we could have worked with a pedestrian crossing as we have with other rail stations. Absent a rail station, no pedestrian crossing other than at streets that are already existing. Okay, so that's also an important point to make. Suttle continued to negotiate, but even with his known deal-making skills, the city appeared to be testing Precourt to the limit. The deal on the table now seemed more enticing for Austin than it did for Precourt. We own the property. Someone is building a $200 million stadium on it and then giving it to us, and then, and then we're charging them rent and they're paying rent for the stadium they just built on our land. Was it possible that the mayor and the Austin City Council knew they held all the cards? When do we get so thank you for that, and that's something that really needs to be thought about and paid for. And then I have a question, like, I don't know if it's for PSV so or staff, but if we need to have some kind of a crossing that either is already existing or is going to be built in the future. Hours of back and forth over Precourt's make-or-break deal was beginning to fray some temperaments. I can feel that everybody's getting real tense in the room. You can feel the tension. The pressure was mounting on Suttle as the MLS to ATX project hung in the balance. And it wasn't just fans in Austin who were nervous. I was sitting on that couch uh, with my headphones in for as many hours as it took. I took it all in. I listened to every millisecond of that thing. The prospect of a no vote would be catastrophic for Precourt who simply couldn't afford to lose. He knew that there was no parallel path for him back to Columbus, where his reputation among a community that had once welcomed him had taken a beating. With Precourt giving up a lot for the dream of owning an MLS team in Austin, Mayor Steve Adler began to show a willingness to support the deal. We've just had uh, uh, the team come in and I think dig beyond where, frankly, I thought they could in order to be able to deliver. Three, it's getting a little squirrely three, in here, but I think, I think Mayor version. Adler is trying to put the reins on this and really take it home. Okay, let's go ahead and take a vote on this matter as amended.
After more than four hours of back and forth across the dais, the moment of truth for all Columbus and Austin fans had arrived. The chamber was ready to vote. And the first to express an opinion would be Leslie Poole. I have some closing remarks I'd like to make. Okay, Council Member Poole. It's clear there's going to be a difference of opinion on this project. And I think it's probably pretty clear to everyone where I stand. So I'll just simply leave it at that. Leslie Poole was the first no vote, but she would not be the last. My trust was at risk from the start, given their treatment of Columbus. I can't support the stadium project. Uh, So I'm not that I'm against soccer, but I'm against soccer for the right reasons. And unfortunately, I don't think these are the right reasons. I'll be voting against something. But the cynicism of some council members would be outweighed by the support of others. Greg Kassar was a yes, as was Jimmy Flanagan both of whom had supported the project throughout. Mayor Steve Adler was next. I can't wait until we are all wearing the same jersey, celebrating the first championship in Austin. As more yes votes were forthcoming, pre-court required just one more to win. The next to speak was Kathy Tovo. Um, I'm going to support this because I believe it will have the kind of benefits, not just that my colleagues have described, but also the benefits. Tovo was a yes. Regardless of the remaining votes, Precourt knew he had what he wanted when he bought the Columbus crew in 2013. And his emotions finally began to surface. Those in favor of this, please raise your hands. This passes 7 to 4. Congratulations. By a 7-4 vote, the city council voted to bring Precourt's vision to Austin, Texas. (laughs) It was a life-changing moment for all of the MLS to ATX supporters, who had spent a generation dreaming of big league soccer in their hometown. Incredibly, just uh, incredibly excited. Uh, thinking about all the things that we talked about back in February at, at McCalla and what this means, it's, it's overwhelming. It's going to be amazing next year. Going from a lone guy with a Twitter account to the vote today, and it just it exceeds expectations. You know, now we don't know what to do with ourselves in the next few days until we start preparing to have a proper supporters group. Go there. Thank you. Thank you. Did a hell of a job, man. Looking forward to it. Can we grab you for a quick comment? Pure joy, uh, ecstasy. I mean, this was something that we, uh, coming into today, it wasn't 100% uh, going to happen. As Precourt circled the room to thank his many supporters, he would eventually find himself face to face with his biggest critic. One of my aides said, Anthony Precourt's coming toward you. And so I stood up and there he was uh, in front of my spot on the dais. This was probably the only opportunity I would ever have to confront him. Well, Leslie, thank you. Sure, Anthony. Uh, you've I been really very committed hope, to the project. And I hope that you are a good and faithful partner I to the city of Austin in ways that you were not in Columbus. You are on, you're on the record now for promises that you must fulfill. Yeah, I will fulfill them. No, I hadn't thought about it ahead of time. It just sort of came out of me. The body language is brilliant. He backs away from me. I hope everybody catches that. Anthony Precourt promises to fulfill his promises. That's great. Instead of leaning into it and saying, yes, Councilmember Poole, I am completely on board, that was his response to back away. But Precourt no longer needed to back away. He had now captured the big prize and was taking a post-victory lap of honor. I'd like to thank all the supporters that have been here. Um, It's been a long emotional process. Um, We're thrilled to move forward. The work starts now and uh, we're bringing Major League Soccer to Austin, Texas. So thank you all. While the normally camera shy pre-court basked in the media spotlight, the question he'd been avoiding all year was finally put to him. 
What would you say Thank to fans in Columbus right now? I think Thank you very much. Thank you so much. What if there's a With the deal in the bag, Precourt immediately flew back to California. But he left having changed Austin's sporting landscape for good. Austin supporters held an impromptu party and welcomed the city council members as guests of honor. For everyone who had supported the project from the start, this was going to be a day and a night to remember. I was at work, so I hugged all my coworkers, high-fived everybody. Not many of them are big soccer fans, so it was like, they were like, okay, like 10 and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> This is great. This is like, this is great. People I've never seen before, old friends, lots of, lots of soccer fans. Yeah. Having spent years drumming up support for MLS in Austin, Josh Babetsky would now be leading a supporter group for real. Woo! Uh, since 2013, uh, we have had one mission, and that mission was to attract a major league soccer team to Austin, Texas. And we did it! We did it! Yeah. We needed a team to rally all of these factions of soccer fans together around a single team, a single identity for Austin to cheer about. And in 2019, we're going to have that. Our work is just beginning, however. But in the meantime, let's drink and party. It was a proud day for Austinites. But as they celebrated, they watched the Columbus crew on the big screens. If things moved as planned, the Columbus crew, founding member of Major League Soccer, would be dead. It was important to the Hunt family and to Major League Soccer that the crew remain in Columbus. Uh, so we're very committed to that. You know, we look forward to being a part of the Columbus community for a long time. Life doesn't provide you many assurances. This team is family to me. All these crew fans out here aren't just like friends. They're family. They treat us like family. This is not over. But the Save the Crew movement had one more card to play, and it was the biggest card of all. Quite frankly, it was always a, a question, at what point do you file the lawsuit? No owner of a professional sports team that uses tax-supported facility for most of its home games and receives financial assistance from the state or a political subdivision thereof shall cease playing most of its games unless the owner gives the political subdivision, in this case it would have been the city of Columbus, uh, in which the facility is located not less than six months advance notice of the owner's intention to cease playing most of its home games at the facility. An obscure and untested law sat on the Ohio State books. After the original NFL Cleveland Browns were moved to Baltimore, it was decided that any sports team in Ohio that used public money on its own facility would be forced by law to offer the team for sale before committing to a move. And that included the Columbus Crew. Volunteer legal experts for Save the Crew had uncovered the law and brought it to the attention of Ohio State Senator Mike Duffy who, in turn, put it on the desk of Ohio's Attorney General, Mike DeWine. They are subject to the law of the state of Ohio. And when they took assistance from the government, uh, municipality took assistance from the state, uh, they were bound to follow this law. One of the things that we want to do is get what the lawyers call discovery, which is the ability to, to get information from them. 
If Precord and MLS would come to the negotiating table and provide options for keeping the crew in Columbus, a legal fight would be unnecessary. But they didn't seem to be listening. To this day, they really have done none of this. They've just totally blown us off and uh, ignored the law and uh, pretended as if it doesn't exist. The legal minutia would be lost on most crew fans, but it provided hope that pre-court's move could still be stopped. I don't know if the lawsuit will ultimately like be the thing that saves us, but it's going to prolong the timeline, and that's what we need at this point. Yeah, I'll take whatever we can get. In their early months, the Save the Crew movement had been dismissed by some as a sideshow, a worthy cause, but lacking any true influence. But now they would step into a courtroom battle with Major League Soccer, with the entire legal might of the state of Ohio to argue their case. I will also point out that uh, there was a courtroom full of uh, uh, crew fans, uh, many of them wearing their crew gear. Uh, so there's real support in, in, in this community for the crew. Against the odds, save the crew, we're taking this fight into extra time. The judge listened as MLS outlined its case, and as it turned out, he gave them enough rope with which to hang themselves. If my younger daughter is 24 years old, if she gets a scholarship or some benefit, I probably indirectly benefit from that. You um, from that. Well, you know, and, and well, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah fair enough. But by the way, nice, I like it. One of the state's top attorneys, a crew fan himself, would argue the case for Ohio. Sam Peterson on behalf of the state of Ohio. Their argument it in, ends up turning on this idea that an, an owner derives no benefit when dollars are paid to the team that he or she or it, in the case of an entity, owns. And that's simply illogical. The judge opted to issue a written verdict in the coming weeks. This now meant that if the crew were to be sold in the meantime, MLS would avoid taking the huge risk of finding out if the untested state law would be upheld in court. But were there any interested parties? 97.1 The Fan Sports Now. Good afternoon. I'm Paul Keels. National League Championship Series starts tonight. The L.A. Dodgers in Milwaukee to meet the Brewers. Last day of prep for third-ranked Ohio State as they get ready to host the Minnesota Golden Gophers of head coach P.J. Fleck. This is the Ohio State House. We're here to interview Mike Duffy, the state senator who brought the untested law to wider political attention. But as we are preparing to record the interview, some unusual messages start to reach us from the outside. I just got a text saying you might want to finish your film today. There was a lot of skepticism. I think people were resigned to the, the crew leaving. While the interview continues, more and more messages start to come through. I'm getting phone calls left, right, and center. It's blowing up. I'm getting phone calls from Austin. Are you? Something going down in the box. Eventually, we're stopped by the frequency of the messages. And it turns out that we're not the only ones. This morning, I got in here at about 10, 45, 11. And literally, since I sat down, my phone just would not stop ringing text messages, everything coming in saying, what are you hearing? Are you seeing these rumors? Is this happening today? I suppose we're going to find out what the hell's going on. Too. Right, right. Let's find out. Whatever was going on, it was sending crew fans into a frenzy. Somebody's got to address this, and I think that will happen today. But everybody that I've reached out to previously who has told me things that prove to be true about this told me, yes, be watching, something's coming down. There was a tweet that went out saying, hey, a bunch of crew fans are gathered at a Never Brewing Company, which is where, you know, that's where a lot of viewing parties happen down in Grandview. I look and like every person I've ever talked to basically is there. Crew fans and Senator Duffy hastily converged at Endeavor, which was playing host to an explosion of euphoria. Although nobody seemed quite sure what they were celebrating, they didn't let that minor detail stop them. 
Even crew defender Josh Williams had shown up. Uh, as a player, to just feel this, uh, I came here for a reason. I, I just wanted to feel this. I wanted to feel why I'm doing this. You know, this is, uh, so apparently, hashtag Save the Crew is the number one hashtag in the nation right now. But nobody seemed to know exactly what was happening. For that, they had to turn to their phones, and eventually, a massive piece of news would reach them. Precourt was no longer in charge of the Columbus crew. But if he wasn't in charge, who was? An impromptu Save the Crew meeting was called, and whatever was being discussed today, it clearly wouldn't require too much concentration. With the meeting now in session, visitors were strictly prohibited. But the body language behind the glass spoke volumes. Local news crews arrived en masse. On live TV, surrounded by those who had fought for so long, Save the Crew leadership announced the greatest win in club history. Well, welcome everyone. Today's a, certainly a very exciting day. Um, we are in the process of saving the crew. There are, there's an ownership group ready to step in and buy the team. Uh, we just received word from uh, MLS that uh, they're committed to keeping the crew in Columbus. As Save the Crew leaders broke the news on live TV, the bar next door erupted in pandemonium. A group of inspired community members stood up and fought for their community and fought for this team. Um, we showed the soccer, we showed the soccer world what Columbus is made of. This has been an enormous uh, roller coaster ride for the last year, and I think that you know, seeing all of our entire city come together has brought a well of emotions up. We're certainly proud of the entire community that has banded together to, to help us in this fight. Um, it's, it wasn't just a, a group of, a core group of people that fought for this, it was the businesses that came out and supported us. It was um, the, the public officials who put their, their, their weight behind us and it really supported our, our efforts. It appears that the crew have been saved. It does appear that it is now hashtag saved the crew. It was saved the crew, now it's hashtag saved the crew. The local investor group have formed an alliance to continue the collaboration with Major League Soccer and keep the crew in Columbus. It was a fairy tale, especially as the new ownership group would be Ohio based and headed by a man who had been with the club since it was founded, the team's physician, Dr. Pete Edwards. And for him, the crew meant more than just a steady job. Remember the fan rally that started the Save the Crew movement? Well, the man who would now be the new figurehead of the crew had been standing in the front row the entire time. Everything in the last year has not able to have been done without everybody here. Without Morgan, John, whoever else has been involved. These guys, it has not been done by a few select individuals. It's everybody in this fucking room. At this point, I don't even know what to say. I'm kind of speechless because I was flying back tears earlier this afternoon. Uh, my brother called me and told me that he thought that something was going to happen today, and I really don't, like, I'm truly speechless. I really, like, I'm literally, I don't know what to say, guys. I just, I just, it means everything to me. I'm just excited, so excited that they stay. Like, overwhelmed, excited. I didn't know until now, because Dad, um, he tried keeping my phone away, because my phone gives me alerts when there's news about the crew, and that one of my friends would tell me, like one of the high members, so, again, I didn't learn until I was right here. It was incredible. To make it even better, I remembered that Ethan's going to shave his beard. Shave the crew! Shave the crew! Shave the crew! You look wonderful! Shave the crew! Oh, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my soul. Yeah? Fuck yeah. Oh, man. Wow. Come on, guys!
Nathan McKinley could finally shave. And it was symbolic of a day Columbus Crew fans would never forget. Against all the odds, they had used their collective skills to rescue their own team from oblivion. For the man whose idea it had been to try and save the crew, it was a moment on which to reflect on the achievement. This whole thing has made my whole life worthwhile. You know when you do something or you're part of something, and like you look back and you go, was that worth it? Uh, everything that I've ever done in my life, like saving the crew, makes that worthwhile. This entire room saved the crew, this entire community saved the crew. And we did that because we're, we were a part of like bringing each other together. And we did that intentionally. We didn't know we were saving the crew at the time, but that's what we did. Every fan, the Save the Crew movement, Anyone who ever Thank you. went to a crew game, you are the ones who made this happen. When someone looked at you and said, yes, yeah, the crew are leaving, right? That's done. It's over. And you were like, no, it's not over. Tell everyone you know. Hashtag save the crew. You are a part of this. The parties across Columbus would go on long into the night. The crew was staying. The ownership group would include Dr. Edwards and the Haslam family, owners of the current NFL Cleveland Browns. At their official unveiling, Save the Crew leadership would be among the invited guests. And their efforts were acknowledged by the most powerful man in Major League Soccer. MLS Commissioner Don Garber. Thank you. Ignited by the passion of your fans, by the Save the Crew movement, Something unprecedented in our industry and something very meaningful was accomplished. You inspired all of us to recognize what the crew means to this city and frankly to motivate the league to creatively find a solution to a very, very complicated situation. And I want to thank you for that. My family's been in Columbus their entire lives. And it really is about the community. We think this is about soccer. It really isn't. It's about our community. It's about having pride in our city. It wouldn't just be local ownership. New general manager Tim Bezbachenko was the son of crew season ticket holders. And the new coach Caleb Porter grew up as a crew fan. And as for the Save the Crew Stadium, a real stadium on that site would shortly be under construction, soon to be filled by the 10,000 people who had taken the Save the Crew pledge to buy a season ticket. Local fans, local ownership, local management, all in a state-of-the-art new stadium. As unlikely as it had seemed at the start, the Save the Crew dream had come true. Instead of moving the crew, Anthony Precourt would be given an expansion team in Austin, although he would have to wait another two years. But he did keep his promises, and Austin FC would begin play in a state-of-the-art stadium. You save them, we broadcast them. Your flagship home for the Columbus crew. WBNSFM, HD1 Columbus. The fan, Ohio sports destination. <laughs> the crew would play on. And at last, fans could forget about business metrics, corporate support, and any other business jargon, and simply go back to why they were there in the first place. The joy of attending the game, seeing their favorite players, the familiar faces around the stadium, the familiar game day rituals. As long as these things remained, the on-field results were almost secondary. 
But in the COVID hit 2020 season, there would be one final cherry to go on the top. Is the first, the first thing is we're gonna contend and win. I'm coming here to try to bring another trophy. Plain and simple. Aiden Morris plays it outside to Harrison Oppel. Whip ball in far post. Celerion shoots and scores for Columbus! Columbus is up 1-0 in Major League Soccer's final game of the 25th season. Outside to Harrison Awful. Whip ball in. Settles at Celebrate on speed. Settles. No, he gets it to Etienne who shoots and scores for Columbus. He works against the defender, wins it, inside the 18, lays it back, Celerion's there, who shoots and scores for Columbus! So cool, so cool! It doesn't get better than that, Chris. That's the whistle and Columbus has won Major League Soccer's Cup Final. It's a fairy tale for the fans. Glory to Columbus, champions of Major League Soccer. What a moment! I am so happy. They deserve it. I was. I can't. I'm crying again. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so cool. Just what these fans had to go through. And they fought and they persevered through the adversity. And I think what they did for the, the team, the team showed for them this year. They showed for them tonight and for them to be at the stands here and hear this and watch this and see this and celebrate. I mean, you can't write a better script than this, you guys. Columbus crew had gone from the brink of extinction to being champions of Major League Soccer. It would never have happened but for a grassroots volunteer movement, working tirelessly as a collective, growing in size and influence, finding solutions to all of the problems, and never giving up. History will record an instance where the fans of a club showed the power they held that club will forever be the Columbus Crew. Tell everyone you know. Got a shot time.